But what do we do now? What do we want to go for? Prove your authority. There's the apartment door. Morel. Still need to find speed. There's the money for Gart. Someone found a way into the secret passage. Tattoos. Boots. So walk around the balcony is 2100. It's not that time yet. Joyce's info on the lynching. There's something she wants to tell you. You just have to present her with your badge. Right. The call. It's in karaoke. This is the only one I can for sure do right now. I think I want to like look around and talk to some people. There. Working class drunk. You know what this means, right? Case solved. Cracked it. All in a good day's work. Uh... What, what did I crack exactly? What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. Oh! It's her husband? The missing husband? Yes. And you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. <laughs> Protect and serve, recruit. Give me champagne. I'm going in. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. You're right. You're right. You're go right. Go and tell the working class woman what you found right now. Don't let it go to our head. Okay. She's right here, too. Perfect. <laughs> She's still searching for a book, her eyes wandering over the colorful grid of soft covers. Protect and serve, madam. I found your husband. God damn it, I already told you. My husband isn't missing. Uh, but you said you didn't know where he was. And I specifically added that I didn't need to know where he was. Well, I found him nevertheless. I'm that good. Very well then. Where is he? She's getting impatient. Her hands now picking on random book. Her hands now picking on a random book cover. Uh, our hammer hooding comrade was at the bottom of the stairs. There, points the working class drunk down near the sea. Excuse me? I, I don't follow. Oh, man, breakthrough. There's something else hiding in her voice, though. A trace of worry. I found a working class drunk, and I thought he might be yours. Right, because working class women come with alcoholic husbands. Uh. You know what? Oh, uh, okay. I feel I feel awful now. Something bad, I guess. I'm sorry. I say stupid things sometimes. I didn't mean to annoy. You were right. I do have an alcoholic husband. Although not that one. So is he missing as well? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> or maybe he is. I don't know. He's probably in the park or in Shamrock somewhere. Drinking with his friends. She looks away. I feel like she does need help. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him. She's completely forgotten about her book, staring blank into the distance instead. There. She's worried now. Kim, is it just me or do we have a missing persons case here? Don't worry, I'm going to find him and bring him back home, I promise. Well, if he's with his friends, then he's not really missing. No need for the police to get involved. Kim, is it just me or do we have a missing persons case here? I wouldn't be so sure. He replies before turning to face the working class woman. Man, just to be completely clear, do you want to report it to the police? Report what? He's just out drinking with his friends. I'm sure the police has better things to do than to chase down local goofballs. Not at all. The RCM is ready to chase down every goofball in town. We care about you. Uh. She sighs, but you can detect a slight hint of gratitude uh, and relief from her face. See? All right, go ahead. 
Do you have any questions? Excellent, excellent, okay. What does your husband look like? Honestly, not that different from you. She eyes you from head to toe. So let me guess. He's disco? Oh, thank God, no. Whoa. It hasn't come down to this yet. Why did you say that your husband resembles me, then? Well, he's slightly chubby. I see. What else? What else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. The lining is hand-sewn. I made it myself. Oh. She sighs, her voice slightly quivering when she adds. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Who cares about the cold when you have your cool jacket to wear? You can completely simplify it. Hell yeah. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. Can you believe it? Well, if that jacket is really that cool, then I can totally understand. Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. She's thinking about him out in the cold, in some park, or on the coast. And it's making her more and more worried. When did you last see him? Yesterday morning. He went to the library. He went to retrieve my book and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. Her eyes become cold with recollection. Because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. It just makes me feel weak. Gone for around 36 hours then. Damn, this is a missing persons case. I knew it! She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. I think I got it, thanks. So you are going to look for him? She genuinely wants you to know. Don't make her ask. Yes, I will bring him back home to you. Thank you. Please do. Even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Prison 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? He gives her a slip of paper. I will. Of course, officer. As I said, it's probably nothing. Let's watch her for a bit. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. Thanks, I'll get going then. Call the Mama Dakwa. It's not only your eardrums that register sound anymore. Your very skin has become an organ of hearing. Perception! Looking for a whisper, light and low. A god who's very, very silent. Nothing escapes you. A cockroach in the other room. A candy wrapper falling on dry grass. A drunk falling from a chair in a bar 20 meters away. In fact, you haven't heard the call du Mama Dakwa, but you have discovered that you have amazing hearing. It must be the only part of you the alcohol hasn't drowned out. Keep listening. Oh yeah, but we lost one encyclopedia. That's fine. Because we do need that perception. Fight working class husband. The working class woman you met in front of the bookstore admitted that her husband is missing. Chances are the guy is drinking somewhere with his buddies. Find him and bring him home if possible. I knew it. Let's go try that. Uh, presumably we can try that again. Oh, maybe we can't. Because we didn't actually increase the skill, right? Okay, we'll put one in perception next time. If I remember. Ah! Yeah, I wanted to talk to, uh, to these guys again. This is the one that wrote that article. I have really held down myself. This is divine. Yes, 
That's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Rene, tsk, tsk. it's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Hmm. Can't ask him about the article, eh? Tell me, what do you know about the dead man? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Did we not ask him about this stuff already? Uh, you must have heard something. No, officers, I'm sorry. And I really would like to assist. You are both good guys. I can see that. We try. Then help them, you wimp. You have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. I wish I could, but I just don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. His cheeks turn red. Respects? The old carabiner can't believe what he's hearing. Sounds a bit like you're holding back. I'm not. I'm not even any... Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, René? I'm not anyone impotent in the Union. I just know Everard. How do you know Everard? Everyone in Martinez knows the Clare brothers. I taught these boys human studies and history in the gymnasium. What do you know about history? You never witnessed history. Only heard about it years later, when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. These two really get along well, eh? There he stands, proud, rigid and alone, like a cracking marble statue. Let's try not to get caught in a crossfire. Lest we leave riddled with bullet holes, this animosity is ancient. Are you a union member? Oh, in many ways, yes. Like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties, help with little things. Everhart, Edgar, and the older debarders all know me. Um, in many ways? Oh, yes. So you're not an actual member? Not in the technical sense. I don't have a vote or a membership card, but Everhart keeps me on the payroll, just for the little things. Of course he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He's a Vezavain. Turns to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate this socialist rabble, but even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence, never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. What are the little things you do for Everhart? Writing work mostly. Occasionally, right. he needs something written, and I happen to have a way with words, people say. What kind of things do you write for him? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers. About Martinez, and how things are, and how they could be. Everhart and I have these long talks where... Well, he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's coming propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, thanks, that's all for now. No, thank you. For being consummate professionals. You'll have this case wrapped up in no time. Uh, I haven't eaten for a while, and that looks delicious. Can I have a, a bite of that? I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. Nothing personal, it's just a principle. The only one you have. The sandwich looks like a culinary wonder. Well made and abundant in components. Mm. The author sure knew their craft. I really want to eat that. In addition to the obvious slice of ham, a fat one, you notice a brim of a tomato peeking from below. And is that mayonnaise? Please, man, can I just have a bite? Believe me, officer. 
I wish I could help you, but I need this sandwich to keep my blood sugar stable. He's squirming, avoiding her gaze. You need to pay attention to these things. He can barely hear him. The sweet oh, no. smell of pickles in harmony <laughs> with garlic butter and marinated onions emanating from the sandwich is driving your mind in a singular direction. It must be yours. Please, friend, let's just share it. Fuck off! It's mine! <laughs> he jerks away immediately, startled by his own reaction. Jeez. Sorry, officer. The hell's I'm wrong sorry. with me? I didn't mean it in a bad way, but the sandwich is mine. I'm not gonna share it. When the dissidents come to rape our country, he hides. But try to get a bite of his dear sandwich and he gets claws? We are a special kind of vermin, Gaston. Convince Gaston to relinquish his sandwich. Rhetoric. Bye for now. Let me check my clothing here. I really want that fucking sandwich. Minus one rhetoric. What are we at now? Shit. Okay. Officer, the mere sight of police in Martinez makes me feel safer already. How can I help you? Let's go. A man so principled about his sandwich Shit. calls for a principled approach. Time to get political. What is political? This right here is political. Okay. The city's going to shit. Sooner or later, some foreign anarchist is going to steal your sandwich. That's a fact. Your blood sandwich is a tool of the oppressors designed to keep the proletariat docile. These options seem awfully fascist or communist. What if I don't want to say them? Let's go with the blood sandwich. What? <laughs> what oppressors? Lieutenant gives you a shark I am not going to listen to this commie connery. He utters through clenched teeth and turns his back to you. Huh? The jolly man is scratching his head in bewilderment. He doesn't understand the situation. Let me ask you, comrade, did you make the sandwich yourself? Look, comrade, the overabundance the sandwich embodies is inherently evil. Nothing, actually. Let's talk about... Yeah, 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 Overabundance. I really don't understand how my sandwich could... He, star he starts to fall silently. Would you rather have a proper sandwich, a sandwich with a soul? I don't either, but wouldn't you rather eat a sandwich free of the bourgeois guilt baggage? I would rather just have this one, officer. It's really good. Oh no, he made him feel bad about his sandwich. Tell this lost comrade what the people's sandwich would be like. Distill the essence of the working man in a sandwich. But imagine a sandwich absolutely minimal in design, sleek, efficient, simple. Imagine a sandwich covered entirely in fine metal dust from an industrial plant. We're gonna go with sleek, efficient, simple. The skepticism emanating from the merry senior could be sensed all the way to the Seminine Isles. He's not imagining it. Let's, uh, let's try to push this further. Envision bread as black as the soil it came from. Melting butter, yellow like the sun shining on the back of, the, of workers on the fields. Salt is essential. There can't be too much because isn't proletariat the salt of society? Now turn it upside down. Black bread like a symbol on top to salute the coal mines or heroes. Everyone loves butter. I don't hate worker food. Look, officer. I like different classic food. Fine dining, not worker backs. Please, just drop it. All right. Bye for now. I tried. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? Still, all you see is an old soldier refusing to replace his uniform with a civilian attire. Anything else I can assist you with, officer? Um, we still have a game to finish. I saw the statue of Felipe the Third. Philippe, sorry, Philippe the Third near the roundabout. Ah, yes, King Philip the Third on his steed. A reminder of what Revachal once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. 
Cocaine? Cocaine -um? Sounds like our kind of king. And just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. Uh, what was that about cocaine? Oh, Hall Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy the nobility loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> His egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? He asks, obviously annoyed. That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine for clarity of vision, to aid in their work. Regnum cocaineum, Ravishal's finest years. He seems to grow taller, brimming with pride about the past. I'm satisfied with this explanation. Of course, clarity of vision, awareness. Lieutenant Mark Striley. Philip III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court medic administered a dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course, he was able to connect with higher realms. Higher realms. Of course, it all makes sense. Pyroladin helps me connect to higher realms. I drink alcohol and go to heaven. What was that about higher realms? Sounds interesting. Such responsibility requires a boost every now and then. I sometimes need one too. Seems like irresponsible behavior for a monarch. Drug users shouldn't even operate heavy machinery, much less rural countries. What's this about higher realms? Sounds interesting. It's really not. Please, do spare us the cocaine fairy tales. Yes, indeed. We're not here to investigate the drug trade of centuries past. But imagine, purest cocaine. Now that would make you feel like a king. Not that you can afford it, but what about speed? Speed is cheap and good. How should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Seems to be a leader should take care of his people before himself. Powerful leaders not afraid to do what must be done. That's what this country needs. Revachol would be a different place if more people realized that. We could still be the... A ruler like us. Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. There's some weariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times before. The carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Let's talk about something else. Right. Renee, I found your guard booth. Yes, the Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. He adds with a slight sigh. He doesn't want to be doing it. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. So who was working your shift that night? No one. The bus has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. You look suddenly very old and tired. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officers. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. He tries to argue. Evrard created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiniers' pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Uh, no, it's not bad at all. That's what we do. Everyone gets it. Big guys looking after the small and everyone working together. I love it. 
Such dependency only weakens a man further. Do or die. There is no middle ground. Renee is but one man. We need to program. Get all the elderly back at the job market. Keep folks motivated. Renee should rent out his services. Invest the profit. Get few more. Get a few more guys. Expand and repeat. Wage work is a dead end. Absolutely nothing wrong with tear collecting. It's my thing. It's my thing too. Bradley hold out the tear back. Oh, I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. I do it too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard boost now? He is not going to become an entrepreneur. Got it, thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. He keeps my senses sharp. Well, let's, uh, let's try again. 28% this time. As Rennie turns it. from you to his partner and back, the medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted, displaying them proudly. How many medals are there? Two. The larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. Let's look at the cross. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles. The medal hangs from a blue striped triangle. And the sun? A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written below. The medals point to his chest. Did you get them for... For bravery. He interjects. It's a conflicted topic for the old veteran. There must have been a number of controversial episodes in his service days. Uh... As I was going to say, bravery. I'm sure. But I know this uniform's reputation. You are also wondering if I got this for raping women or killing babies. Mm. No, I really wasn't. I'm just asking. Honor is everything to me. Says with grim finality. Whoa. Sounds like you're about to open the gates of conversation. This man will literally talk your ear off if you let him wander off to memory lane. Um... Sounds like there's a story there, but I'd like to talk about something. So what did you get the medals for? For doing my duty in the heat of battle. I want to hear the story. For looking my mortality in the eye. When men like Gaston here hid in the bushes and shed themselves. He saved some muddy princeling who foolishly strolled into the front line in his gown of velvet and gold. Saved a princeling? It was on the first months of the revolution here in Revachel. Unrest was spreading like wildfire. Marauders had taken most of the Koran and were getting really ambitious. King Frisell thought he could end it all in one decisive strike. Sent his cousin, Drisson, to put an end to the unrest. Alas, the young Drisson was all piss and no vinegar, wearing a tunic of purple velvet and cockatoo feathers to battle. Even his rifle was god-plated, shown from five clicks away. Can you imagine the asininity? Purple velvet tunic. Hmm. That isn't exactly camo. To keep the long and bloody story short, Drisson marched us against the partisans in Koron. And when I say march, I mean made us walk into captured enemy territory, single file, like toy soldiers, while he rode in front on his giant red stallion. The rebels were smart. They let us come real close before opening fire. Suffice to say, it was carnage. Must have been a bloodbath. I got shot in the left shoulder and went down. Just a flesh wound. But just as I turned over, the prince fell into the mud next to me. He was missing his lower jaw. Then his horse, driven mad by the noise and smell of gunpowder, stepped on my leg and shattered my knee. Okay, then what did you do? I grabbed my sidearm and shot the beast in the head. Then everything went black. Captain Arno, le fléau des chevaux. When I came to, it was all over. It was just me and Joel Estresson, gurgling in the blood-soaked mud right next to me. The Dink had taken numerous flesh wounds and lost a lot of blood. But despite missing his jaw, he seemed hesitant to die. Tougher than he looked, that one. Hmm. This would never happen to Johnny Lawjaw. My jaw is tight. Right, right. <laughs> so I grabbed the prick and started crawling. 
Kept going until the 59th Cavalry picked us up. Through some miracle, we both survived. And the jealous freak convinced Frisell to give me a medal for not leaving him to die in his own blood. Peace and shit. He was the commanding officer and I was on duty. Just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the sun for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. You sense he's downplaying it. Huh. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, and untarnished self-worth. Sounds like you're being modest, Renee. The old carabineer stands quietly like a statue, his features motionless. What Monseigneur Modesty is not telling you is that he crawled over seven kilometers before the cavalrymen found him and Rizan. Two days later, that was. And that even while crawling with mongled half dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself. It's there. Hold on, you're just a little bit proud of Renee's heroics, aren't you? Quite impressive. It's men like Renee who made Revachel great once. I'm not impressed. All those heroics, and where is he now? You gotta play to win. Look after you first. Hmm. Let's see if we can uh, get him to express his, his, his pride in, in his friend. Sorry, officer, but you're reading me all wrong. I'm a man of peace. And these kinds of bloody heroics are only impressive to men like Rene himself. Hmm. Certainly not to me. How did you find the story to be, officer? Hmm. I'm not impressed. All those heroics and where is he now? Nah, you gotta play to win. Look after you first. Maybe, maybe, but also be in mind, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service record. Points to the sun-shaped metal on Renee's chest. Oh no, you have to get shot. Repeatedly. And you need to get your hands bloody too. Really, really bloody. Sounds pretty proud of his friend. Do not speak of what you know nothing about, Poltroon. Duty is something you will never understand. Thanks for the story, Renee. Bah! There were many such stories in those days. Many such men, too. True Eversholians. Men with backbone. Oh, yes, René, yes. Men were bigger, girls were prettier, and everyone wore the fascia. Lord, please, bring those days back, if you can. I'm not getting into this with you again. <sighs> Officer, was there anything else? He mumbles through clenched teeth and turns to you. You should try to come up with a heroic oh. story of your own. Impress this old soldier. Rene told you his war story now, impress him with your heroics. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anything worth mentioning among your achievements. You I, should resort to good old lying. I really like that you get all these options even if you fail. I, uh, I had a dog, Fifi, took her fishing late one autumn, but the boat rocked and she fell in, so I jumped after her. Brene, I'm ex-army too, special forces, black ops, secret soldier. <laughs> Definitely. Secret soldier. Really? What was the unit? Something with colors and headwear. Soldiers identify with those okay, things. Okay, 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 okay. Say it's classified. An old soldier should understand. Um, the information is classified. That's what I thought. We'll get back to our game now, if you don't mind, officer. Strange. He didn't buy it. Thanks for your time. 